I want to start this short video off by saying that I am in no way representing Gary Dobbins and Dobbins Fishing Rods. I've never met Gary Dobbins. No sponsorship, no anything. It's just a product I believe in, and I want to pass on a few points about that. I'm D.W. Verts. It's Hickbilly Outdoors. We're going to talk fishing poles. Be right back. You take a guy like me, been fishing a long time. It's amazing things that I've seen change over the years, and it's just the way the world works. Change is inevitable. But when it comes to fishing poles, lordy, y'all don't know how good you got it. You younger people, say under 40. When I started fishing in the 70s, a fishing rod was five and a half foot long. More often than not, they were fiberglass. My first fishing rod was solid fiberglass. It was horrible. A little bit better nowadays. So why Dobbins? What am I going to talk about here? Again, I'm not sponsored by Gary Dobbins. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I've never met Gary Dobbins. Visit with him on the internet and via email. So I intend to meet up with him someday because I think he's a pretty cool cat. But he owns this rod company out of Sulphur Springs, Texas. And what's that got to do with anything? Maybe not much, except I think the way he runs his company is pretty different. Interesting. What happened was, uh, UltimateBass.com a few years ago, I joined up with those guys. The, the best discussion forum on the internet for bass fishing. The most friendly one out there, anyway. And Gary is kind of a sponsor of the site and things like that. But what got me was, they have a Dobbins forum. And he would contribute to it from time to time, which I thought, well, that's kind of cool, you know, but it's good for business. And then one day, he reached out to me over some comments I'd made, not negative comments, but about fishing in general, about his rods. I thought, how special is that? I have been in this industry from a professional standpoint. I was there for 20 years. I was sponsored by Falcon Rods at one time. I helped with their Lowrider series back in the day. But here's a man I've never met, may never meet, and I still plan on it, actually. Gary, watch out. I'm coming for you. And he reaches out with some very intuitive things about his rods and fish, and he takes it personal. He took the time to read a post on an internet forum, and he said, wow, check this out. So that's really important to me, the, the personal touch that happens very rarely in today's industry. Now, I don't know, maybe somebody from some of the other companies will do that. But to me, I'm going to support somebody that supports the fishermen. And that's what got me started with Dobbins Rods. Now, I do not use Dobbins Rods exclusively. For one thing, I own 150 casting rods. But I use them more and more all the time. The, I own Dobbins Rods from the cheapest rod that he builds, which I believe right now is a, a $79 Colt. It, uh, a <laughs> Colt thing. It's funny. And they're purdy. <laughs> Gary uses really good components and all his stuff. There is no cheap in cheap. He understands price point. It's important. This, when I bought these things a couple years ago, this Colt series, I think they're still $79 rod. You can buy a cheaper rod. Go to Walmart, you can get $49 rods, and I've got them. And they catch fish. But for $79, you get rods. It's just a different feel. The blanks are better. More guides. One thing you find on cheaper rods is they, they shorten up on guides. You cannot have a rod with too few of guides. It gets you in trouble. You need to have enough guides to support the blank and make the bend happen. It's all scientific stuff you don't have to know. This Colt series is my go-to. I'm in my kayak and my john boat. For one thing, they get banged around a little bit more. It's amazing how well they take it. And I've got videos on my channel showing me catching whacking big old bass with these $79 rods. They've got a new series out come out this year, the Mavericks. I haven't got a chance to try those yet. They're $100. Talk about a price point rod. Now, to me, $100 is a lot of money for a rod because back in the day, that was a uh, Fenwick HMG back when I was a kid. That was a rod you wanted. They were $100 rods in the 80s, early 80s. And that was the, the rod to have. And I owned one of them ever. This is a better rod. With the modern technology, modern blank designs, through handle grips, better guides, it's lighter than my HMG was, 
and it's the same less is less money than that rod was. So that means that Maverick and hundred dollars is probably gonna be it may be twice the rod the HMG was. Just trying to draw some correlations here between different rods and reels. Um, I don't fish a spinning rod near enough, but boy, having some Dobbin spinning rods, you talk about cool poles. I've got several in the Sierra, which is a hundred. I think I paid one hundred forty-nine dollars for the Sierra. This is a Fury. Um, this is a hundred and twenty-nine dollar rod, I believe. And don't get on to me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. I haven't bought a Dobbin's rod this year. I bought a bunch of them last year. I own them all the way from a six foot eight inch up to to a seven and a half foot flipping rod. The only kind of rod I don't own in Dobbin's right now is a crankbait rod because I have so many crankbait rods that work. And I, I, I'm not going to buy rods just to buy rods. That's That would be that'd be being a bass fisherman. Whatever. Um, I have plans to buy some crankbait rods. I broke a couple this year um, that really I thought aren't the rods I thought they would be. I've had them for a few years. But uh, basically, I'm not going to buy any more rods besides Dobbins when I do need rods. So I have 150 or so casting rods. I broke a couple this year. I've got 148 casting rods from ancient to this newer stuff. But when I buy rods, it's going to be a Dobbins. Because Gary Dobbins, and Gary, if this isn't going to work, I'm sorry. But man, he takes personal interest. I, I just, to me, click, click. And he donates and he helps. And he's, well, look him up. The man's been a professional bass fisherman. He's been there and done that. He knows how this game's played. He knows how to build good stuff. It's pretty interesting. For me, personally, I'm nobody. You've never heard of me except YouTube. I won 50-some tournaments in my life, which it's been over 20 years so I fished competitively. I, I, mean, I don't fish tournaments anymore. I fished one last year. Um, I've won every crop of tournament I've ever fished. I can fish. I know something about it. I've been doing this my whole life. I'm 58, been fishing since I was 3 years old. Been bass fishing since I was 12. I guided for over 20 years. I fished tournaments for 20 years. I have did all of that. I know something about it. Maybe Dobbins not. builds a multitude of rod lengths and actions, which most companies do, but it's just amazing how close Dobbins gets it for specific techniques and things. It's really cool. They're a seven foot uh, medium light spinning rods. I have several of them in different versions. That is the ultimate walleye and crappie rod for me. And I use it a lot for bass too. It's just amazing how good that rod is. Crazy. Um, said so different actions all the way up to heavy crankbait rods, flipping rods, down to panfish poles. So that's a good thing. Hey, Gary, if you ever build a fly rod, I'll be the first one to buy. Yeah, I need a six weight, eight and a half footer. Just letting you know. The biggest thing is, the takeaway is, you younger guys, say under 40, under 45, oh, if you just knew how good you have it. Oh my gosh. And for the price, from this Champion Series style rod down to a $79 coal, you cannot believe how good you actually have it in fishing nowadays. Gary Dobbins has done his best. He's always thinking, from what I've seen, I've, just, I've never talked to the man. He's always thinking. He's always putting new things out. I don't know how his research and development team works. I don't know what he's got going that way. He builds good stuff. He seems to be a really good guy. He takes interest personally in the fishermen. And to me, that is something we sorely need in today's world. Because most of this corporate stuff, it's horrible. There you go. I am going to use Dobbins rods. Probably the rest of what may be a very short life. I don't get out of this rain. It's fixing the lightning on me. God bless you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.